there are different seasons in our life where we need to do a reset. We need to focus on what is the most important things in life, and we might be in one of those seasons right now. Hi, my name is Cody Archer, and I want to welcome you to this week's Revive Live. I'm so glad that you're joining us. As always, I love to hear from you. Let us know where you're joining us from. Go ahead and write in the comments. We love to see people from over 40 nations every single week that are joining in and, and enjoying these conversations. So thanks for joining us. And today I am super honored to have with me Diane Bickle. Diane, thank you so much for being with me today. My pleasure. You are a mother of two sons. You have grandchildren. You're mm -hmm. from, or you live in the Kansas City area. Uh -huh. You're a business owner. Yeah. And uh, you've been in real estate for how many 20, years? Over, tw over 20. Over 20 years. You've uh -huh. been a, a pastor's wife. Yeah for over 30 years mm -hmm. and you guys have made such an impact on my my personal life my wife and I just want to honor you and say thank you for Aww. all the sacrifices that you guys have made also coming from the International House of Prayer the prayers that you guys pray regularly to over 12 hours a week for us here in the mm -hmm. land is just amazing there's been times where I've literally broken down crying as you guys are praying for leaders by name, even our congregation, Asher. I've even heard my name mentioned from, from IHOP yeah. and just, it's been amazing. So thank you guys yeah, so much for standing so with welcome. us, not just in words, but in action and in radical mm. love. And sometimes it feels you know, disconnected as you're on the other side of the world and you don't know what kind of impact you're praying or having in, mm -hmm. in the prayer room. But really, people's hearts are moving. The Holy Spirit is touching us as you guys pray. So thank you so much. Oh, it's our pleasure. And you know, you, you said sometimes you start crying. And mm -hmm. like, so do we. Because mm -hmm. when, when our hearts get connected in that place of prayer, mm -hmm. you feel the mm -hmm. Lord's affection yes. for the people that you're praying for. Yeah. And uh, so we're vested at the heart level. And we will not stop praying for mm -hmm for what the Lord's doing here through His servants. And yeah, amen, well, yeah. thank you. Well, today we don't have a lot of time, but I do want to touch on a few things. First of all, I think, you know, probably any one of our audience would know who Mike Bickle is, but they may not know you as well. We get to see Mike on stages and he speaks yeah. and he t shares testimonies, but we don't know your story. And so I'd love to hear a little bit of your story, where you're from, how you mm -hmm. came to faith, how you and you and Mike met together. Okay, I grew up uh, a ca little Catholic girl uh, five children in our family, and I had a God consciousness uh, mm -hmm. from from a youth, and um, but didn't know Jesus as mm -hmm. my Savior until I was almost 21 years old. Mm -hmm. My little sister had come to faith in Jesus, and she prayed like mad for our entire family. Wow! And within an 18 month period, every single one of my family members, except uh, one sister who was already married all came to know Jesus, my mom, my dad, um, m and my two brothers and myself. And uh, I thought that was normal. Huh. It was in the uh, mid to late 70s. There was the Jesus movement mm -hmm. going on. Yes. I thought that this was what happened in every family. And uh, it was only many years later that I realized that there was something sovereign that the Lord was doing in our family. And uh, my siblings walk with the Lord today. Wow. And um, so I met Mike in the context of this storefront fellowship that I started attending when I hmm. came to faith. Wow. Um, it was a room full of teenagers, you know, three times the size of this room, and I was the oldest kid there. I was 21. I had the car. Hmm. I could drive my new fr <laughs> newfound friends around. Uh -huh. And Mike came as a, um, a visiting preacher okay. one weekend. And um, so it's a very long story. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll say this for some of the listeners. I was engaged to someone I had dated prior to coming to faith. Okay. And um, tried like mad to get this man to walk with the Lord. Mm. But it didn't take. Okay. And so um, I ended up breaking my engagement with him. And um, I ended up getting married to Mike uh, one month earlier than the date I had set to to marry the other guy the guy I had been engaged ah, to oh wow and it, I had no knowledge that you know that Mike was on the horizon I had no knowledge that the Lord was totally changing the trajectory of my life hmm. when I decided that I couldn't be yoked I could not be unequally wow. yoked yes. and it was the hardest thing I ever did hmm. at 21 years mm -hmm. old and it is the thing I have thanked the Lord for over and over and over wow. and over again. Amazing. So, um, yeah. So, 41 years later, I am still in love with that man yes. more than ever. Amazing. And um, respect 
the call of God on his life, mm -hmm. have um, partnered with him in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, any wife who partners with her husband in the call of God understands the cost mm -hmm. and, and also the privilege of doing it. Yeah. And so, wow, um, that's beautiful. Yeah. Now, did you, in those early years as a believer, did you have any kind of like prophetic tip-offs where the Lord was going to show you some of the business things you'd be doing, some of the ministry, the thousands of people you'd be touching, or is that all of this just kind of a surprise as you kind of fell into it? I, if I write a book, the title of the book will be Stumbling into the Will of God. Wow, okay. Because I, I had not seen so much mm. of what has come my way. Wow. And, um, you know, as I look back on it, there, there were little clues, uh -huh. but I was slow to get them. <laughs> And, um, and I've always just wanted to say yes to the Lord, whatever mm -hmm. that looked like mm -hmm. and whatever uh, way that opportunity that I could understand that was really Him. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't position myself for business. I didn't position myself to marry a pastor. Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, I, these are so many things that, you know, many people long to marry a pastor and mm -hmm. start a business and, you know, be successful. It's like, I just want the will of God. Mm -hmm. And I, I find that there's a lot of contentment in the wow. will of God and yes. grace to carry it out. Yeah. So long answer to your question. Yeah. Sorry. Wow. No, that's great. <laughs> now, uh, this whole tension between being in the marketplace yeah. and serving in the congregation, what do those tensions feel like for you? Because I know there's other people out there. I don't, I don't experience that personally. Yeah. But how, how was that walking out as a mother? Raising children, mm -hmm. being a business owner, and not yeah. just being a uh, leading a church of say fifty people. You guys have been in the hundreds or thousands yeah. for decades, mm -hmm. and that's not easy at all. What's that been like? Uh, first of all, it was after my children were older and in high school that I mm -hmm. actually went into the marketplace, and so mm -hmm. I was a homeschooling mom oh, wow. for for many years, and that was my joy and my delight. And um, but when they were in high school, uh, I s the Lord specifically told me to start a real estate company. Wow! It was a prophetic, you know, thing, and the Lord confirmed it in multiple ways, so that it was unmistakable to me that if I did not do this, I would be disobedient. Wow! And so, uh, because of that that clear understanding from the Lord. I decided I feared the Lord more than I feared doing something that I didn't mm. know how to do, mm -hmm. which was start a company. Yes. Um, wow. I ventured out, and wow. uh, obviously the Lord upheld me. He brought amazing people that I could not have done it without them. Mm. So I attribute um, uh, the success of our company to the amazing people mm -hmm. that have come alongside to work with us through the years. Um, we're 18 years old, and uh, my wow. son is now running the company. And it's actually, now it's a company that's a part of the ministry, a part of IHOP. And so um, we have all along had the desire to support the ministry through mm -hmm. our business. And mm -hmm. that is what we've done. Yeah. Um, with our corporate profit, the Lord has allowed us to pour into specifically wow. to the Night Watch. Yes. Through the years we've done that. And wow. be a source of funding for the ministry as well as getting to touch people in our city, in our community. Mm -hmm. It has been attention, yes, mm -hmm. but it has been an adventure that wow. I would not have wanted to miss wow. because I have gotten to know people that I would never have known through the ministry. Mm -hmm. Unbelievers, wow. I've had an opportunity to pray with people and lead them to the Lord, wow. um, see people healed in my office, wow. uh, pull the car off the road when I'm showing houses and cry with a, a distraught woman wow. and Amazing. help her to understand that there was you know, new life ahead for her. Mm -hmm. So. Wow. I get to, I've got to do the best of both worlds, mm -hmm. I feel like. I yes. feel so grateful to the Lord that I've been able to do both and, um, and also to be in the house of prayer mm. because my office is right there. Like I walk out the door to, and half a block and there's the house of wow. prayer. So it's like I feel That's like I'm great. the only person that gets to park their car once it, during the day and get to do everything that I love wow. and everything that the Lord <laughs> has um, empowered me to be That's able to so do. That's so cool, so cool. So in the, the name of your realty company is Glad Heart Realty? Glad Heart Realty, and yeah. And you have a website? We do have a website, gladheartrealty.com. Okay, so if, friends, if you're in the Kansas City area and you need a home, here you go. Yeah, connect with Diane we'd and love her business. to help you, absolutely. Go, go and uh, connect with her and her team. Yeah. Now, I want us to shift a little bit. As you guys are starting the International House of Prayer, there was a season, um, I don't know a lot about it, but I know that there was a lot of attack 
where believers who didn't agree or see eye to eye in what, we, what you guys were doing, a lot of the prophetic was happening, mm -hmm. and there was just tons of attack. Things were blowing up online, attacking you guys personally. What, what was that like for you? Because I know uh, many of our leaders are going through some similar things. Yeah. What is that like to be a pastor's wife and your husband and you, your character, all these things are being attacked mm -hmm. from every direction. How, what was that like for you? Great question, big loaded question. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, there's always more pain when you're attacked by people that you love, right? Mm -hmm. And people that have um, maybe been hurt or offended or just mis have misunderstanding. And so that's where the greatest pain comes in. Mm -hmm. It's from the outside yeah. and people who don't really know you and you don't yes. have a relationship with. Mm -hmm. There's less pain in that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that, because we've had a lot of opportunity to confront this reality, mm -hmm. um, Anybody who's doing anything worthwhile mm -hmm. will come under attack. Yeah. And um, there's always opportunity for offense. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that is the best opportunity for us to lean into Jesus. And then in that moment, he was attacked, mm -hmm. he was betrayed, he was misunderstood, wow. he was maligned, he was yeah. killed. Wow. And um, I haven't shed blood. Mm. He did. Yeah. Right. He he took it all the way to that level of love, wow. and um, and and so he's he's our model. Like we look to mm -hmm. him and say, you know, Jesus, help us. Yes. You know, to be as you were. And wow. one of the things that Mike has always said is like, there's tests that come your way as you walk with the Lord, and and um, the Lord is so kind. He'll give you that test again and mm. again and again and again <laughs> until you pass it. Wow. Yes. And. Uh, Early on, when I married Mike, I was a new believer, um, new pastor's wife, and uh, you know I didn't know how to be any of those things. And so I'd run, I'd go like, "Oh my gosh, these people said this. I, what am I going to do?" And he'd be like, "Diane, the Lord is is holding you accountable for how you respond." Mm. Well, and yeah. so um, learning how to carry our hearts in such a way that Jesus is our most important person what mm. he says about my life wow. that's what matters that's so good and uh is it difficult yeah mm -hmm. but trusting him to um be that fire uh of protection around about us yeah. and keeping us focused so that we can do what he's called us to do mm -hmm. i find that if you get distracted with the critics and um, with the naysayers you will not be able to fulfill the call mm, that God has wow. upon you because That's really good. because you're so uh, uh, you know dismantled, you're so dif diffused in yes. so many different directions. Yeah. You cannot stay the course. Wow. That's what we want to do. We want to stay the course, and we want to see our roots go deeper to where um, we're glorifying the Lord yeah. in the midst of wow. whatever That's comes beautiful. our way. Well, and you guys have really gone through that and only shine, you shine even more now. I can just see how so much of that pressure is only produced more of the anointing, the glory mm -hmm. of God in your family and your hearts and transformation. So thank you for being forerunners in a sense. And a, it's not a nice thing, but yeah. you guys have really been forerunners going through a lot of difficulties but you've come through with mm. great positivity and the love of the Lord and compassion. So that's amazing. Well, friends, I believe that this conversation is really blessing. I want to encourage you to like and share this broadcast. This conversation is touching my heart. And Diane, I also, as we're coming to the close, I want us to also talk about the this year of reset. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just a year or a longer season. We don't know what that's going to look like. But one of the things of 2019 for IHOP, you guys sense the Lord speaking to you about this is a time to reset, to come back and sit at my feet. We're going to focus on intimacy of the Lord in a new way. We're going to build community and family in mm -hmm. a deeper way. And we're going to keep focus on the, the being forerunners, yeah. locking into these end time scriptures that speak about Israel and preparing the nations for Yeshua's return. Let's talk a little bit more practically. Like, what does that look like for us as believers when the Lord says, OK, it's time to reset and slow down? How do we actually dial back from our super busy lives and actually you know, do less so we can spend more time at his feet? What does that look like for you guys? Yeah, yeah for us, <clears throat> we are, we're looking at everything that, that we've been doing. One of the big things we've done is we've, we just fin did our last One Thing conference mm -hmm. uh, at the end of 2018. And 
you know, we're, we don't know if that's forever or for the next three, five, eight years, mm -hmm. but um, there's things that, you know, that as you grow in ministry and the ministry turns from five years to 10 years to 12 years, mm -hmm. you get in a rhythm, you just, you know, you mm. keep doing things and you feel invincible and you feel like you can just, you know, take on more and, and, um, and there's, this is the opportunity for us to just stop. Like I'm looking at you, mm -hmm. like we're doing that at, at IHOP. Mm. We're calling our mothers and our fathers together. Uh, like I've, we've located moms and dads in our midst who have time mm. and zeal and heart to wow. sit down with sons and daughters. Because wow, Malachi is like, uh, four speaks about how the, the hearts of the fathers are mm -hmm. turning to the sons and the sons to the fathers. We feel like that's a big part of the reset mm -hmm. is, um, what are we going to hand off to this next generation? Wow. And how can we hand something off to them if we don't know them mm. and they don't know us wow. at that uh, at that heart connect level? Yes. So um, focusing on sitting at Jesus' feet mm -hmm. together with one mm. another, going vertical, yes. going horizontal and vertical together wow. is what uh, we feel the Lord's calling us to wow. do in this season. And then also growing stronger in terms of our understanding of the of the scripture, what the Lord's doing in the end times, mm -hmm. His heart for Israel, yeah. the foreigner message, um, these three things are our focus mm -hmm. in the future. But clearly, the Lord is elevating the f uh, the focus of the family in mm -hmm. our midst, mm -hmm. and um, and just slowing down to be with each other over a cup of coffee, uh -huh. or a lunch table, or a dinner table is on our agenda and wow. uh, we're doing it. Wow, it's amazing. Well, I want you to pray for us in a second. Um, and I just wanna close by honoring you again. Just, you guys are also forerunners in this. You know, it's a, it's a big thing as a ministry to declare, we are slowing things down. We're trimming some areas. Mm -hmm. We're going back to the feet of Yeshua. We're not gonna be as public and on media and all of those things all the time. And that's huge, but I believe that that step of faith is empowering many other ministries and leaders all around the world to say, hey, it's okay to slow down. It's, things aren't going to fall apart. You know, the money's not just going to stop coming in because we make the step. No, God is going to mm -hmm. bless this. And so yes. thank you guys for taking this bold step of faith and being an example to believers ar around the world. Absolutely. So Diane, if you could just pray. I just, yeah. I just sense, you know, the Lord's speaking to you guys about this slowing down thing. Would you just mm -hmm. pray for, for me, for our ministry, for those that are joining us right now, that the Lord would really help us to yeah. actually reset not just in words, but really in our mm -hmm. lives, in a real practical level. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, Jesus, I just, I just pray yeah. for Cody and mm -hmm. and for um, for everyone who is yes. uh, called by your name. That mm -hmm. in this season, that 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 they would see that we would see together the value, the beauty, the dignity mm -hmm. of coming together and locking our arms together and our hearts together in that place of sitting at your feet, Amen. Jesus, yes. and listening to your voice. We, we do want to pour out that alabaster vial. Amen. We do want to pour it out over you. We do want to declare that there is none like you, Jesus, and we want to do it together. Yes. We want to see strength. Yeah. We want to see vitality and, and peace, the shalom yeah of your heart come yeah. into all of your people all over the earth. So God, would you position our hearts mm -hmm. to connect with you yes. and to connect with one another in a profound way, in a way that strengthens your body, your, uh, your bride yes. all over the earth. We want to be ready yeah. for your return. Yes, so water us yeah. as we pour out our worship upon you. We just speak a blessing over your people all over the earth. In Jesus' yes. name, amen. Amen, beautiful, powerful, thank you. Thank amen. you, you're an awesome hero of the faith. And friends, I just thank you for joining us on this week's Revive Live. I believe this has been a blessing to you, and I look forward to seeing you next week on Revive Live.